So we're going to solve this ODE. How many initial conditions? Remember, we have to have initial conditions if we're going to use the Laplace method. So how many initial conditions will I need? Two. How do you know? Second order, you need basically, yeah, one for each derivative. So we got y of 0 is 2, and y prime of 0 is negative 2. So <clears throat> the procedure was written down before. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I'll try to copy paste. I think I need a mouse to copy paste. I think I've tried this. Oh, I can move though. Oh. I don't actually need to copy and paste. Oh, that was great. Oh, yeah, it has to do one drag at a time. Yeah, so I'll just do it. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Except that. Whatever. I'll just leave <laughs> that blue ex in there. <laughs> That's too much work. This doesn't use layers like Photoshop. All right. <clears throat> so I don't want to flip back to the algorithm because that's going to require a lot of zooming in and out. Uh, so I flip back to it in my notes here. You have it in your notes. So we are using the 27.41 in that box. I'm just going to rewrite it with n equals 2 now. So we always get the top line, which is a2s squared plus a1s plus a0 l of y minus, and we get the last two of these. So this will be a2s plus a1 y to the n minus 2, which is those. Oh. Two, that should be y to the 0 derivative Oops, of 0. Did you say 27.21? 4, 1? Is that? Hopefully that's in your book. Yeah, that's the right. The numbering system is a little funky. Like 27.41 doesn't necessarily come right after 27.40. They have slightly different numbering for like theorems versus examples versus other tables and whatnot. Was it pretty easy to find that, 27.41? Yeah. Okay. Page 299. Page 299. All right, so we have that second to last one, and then the very last one is a2, y, n minus 1 derivative is first derivative of 0. And this is all supposed to equal L of f. So that's just using n equals 2 on that table that's in your book. So what is a2? So a2 is 1. That's the coefficient in front of the second degree term. And a1 is going to be the 2. And a0 is the invisible 1 in front of y. So those are just the coefficients. And I think we have enough to put all the uh, substitute all these values in. So that y, you don't have to write y0 derivative. But just remember, what is a zero derivative? It's a function itself. It's a function itself. So it's basically don't do any derivatives. So the zero derivative is the y of zero is two, and then the first derivative is the y prime uh, of zero equals negative two. All right, so plug everything in and see what you get. You're supposed to solve for L of Y. And find L inverse of L of Y, and that will be Y.
And you can use the table on page 306. <clears throat> oh, what is our f function? What's the one thing we haven't used yet? The one. So f of x is that one over on the other side. It's what your ODE, it's the function your ODE equals. So that's your f function. So f of x is one. Or in our lazy notation, f is just one. So any substitution questions off of what I have on the board? All I did was put the value, the A values in, A0, A1, A2. I put in the F function and the initial condition values. So that's all I did right here. All right, how do I solve for L of Y? I see it. Yep, we're just going to add all the stuff that's not multiplied by L of Y and then divide by this uh, coefficient L of Y. Uh, another thing I have to do, what is L of 1? That's on page 306 as well. So I think we got 1 over S squared was our L of 1. Can you check real fast on that table? Or maybe it's 1 over S, I forget. K over S, okay, so it's 1 over S. <clears throat> so that's right off that table in 306. You want to practice using that table a little bit because it's a little bit strange, but you should get used to using it. Is this going to be on the quiz tomorrow? Uh, I can't put this on the quiz tomorrow, so I just taught you. I'm teaching it right now. Well, I mean, like, you had a lot of stuff from yesterday. It's not gonna be, but it's not going to be on anything. We're still in the middle of the section. Okay. Well, I know that you can do whatever you want, so that's why I'm asking. Oh, that's definitely true. Do you put, like, if, if you finish 27.8, or part A, could you put 27A on, on the quiz? Or would you just finish 27 first? Oh, I'm going to give you a take on quiz tomorrow. That will include everything on, up to and including what we're doing right now. So you'll be doing this on your take on quiz. All right, so I just distribute everything out and wrote the 1 over s in for L of 1. So now I'm going to add all this stuff over. We got a minus 2. So we're going to have 2s plus 2 plus 1 over s equals n squared plus 2s plus 1 L of y. Is my arithmetic correct or algebra correct? Okay. Uh, now we're going to divide, uh, but before I do that, I don't want to have a fraction of fractions, a multi-story fraction, so if I just go and divide over, I'm going to have a 1 over s divided by another fraction, or divided by something else. So I'm going to go common denominator on the right side first. So we got 2s squared plus 2s plus 1 all over s. So just a little common denominator. Now, I'll divide by the other term there. Stop. 
so y equals L inverse of all this stuff. All right, so look at uh, page 306. Do you see anything that looks at all like this right here? Not even close. It's way too complicated. All right, so we got a problem. This doesn't look at all like anything in that uh, page. <coughs> How in the world can I take this fraction and rewrite it so it looks like fractions in that table? Could FOIL it out, but I don't think there's any S cubes in there in the denominator, right? There's a couple S squareds, but nothing that really looks like this. Factor? Kind of. I could factor this. It's pretty easy to do, the denominator. Uh, the numerator is not going to factor nicely. So denominator s, uh, is this s plus 1 times s plus 1, or s plus 1 squared. All right, so you need to remember way back to calculus 2. If I asked you to integrate this, how would you do it? Quotient rule? Or there is no quotient, quotient <laughs> rule for integration. So no, you would not use that. I don't think a U sub will save us here. Double U sub. <laughs> How would you integrate this? Come on. What section of chapter 8 are you forgetting? Parts. Could try integration by parts. Partial fractions. Partial fractions. Goodness gracious. Partial fractions. Well, we had to guess them all. <laughs> You're running out of techniques. <laughs> well, I don't think there's many left <laughs> that we've seen. <laughs> hyperbolic trig, antiderivative, that's about it. Or inverse hyperbolic trig, antiderivative. All right. Partial fractions. So, use partial fractions here. How do we do that again? So, in case that was beers ago, you will need to. I guess back then I didn't use Oh, I almost had the term BS. <laughs> but you only need a degree one coefficient, or degree zero polynomial above a degree one. Mm -hmm. So I don't need BS plus C. I just need B. The S plus one's repeated, so I need a second term for the square power. All right, is this jogging your memory? Unfortunately. All right, what do we do next? We can, but the one I want to use is s equals zero, which is a serious problem right now. Problem. So you multiply by the, all the denominators. Because there's L of y on the other side, wh I don't want to multiply L of y by s times s plus one squared. So I'm just going to move this over a little further away. Let's partition this off. So I'm going to multiply by the denominator, which is s times s plus 1 squared. So we got 2s squared plus 2s plus 1 equals a s plus 1 squared plus b s times s plus 1 plus c s. All right, find a, b, and c. I think s equals 0 is a good s value, and s equals negative 1 is another good s value. All right, so find a, b, and c right now. I think they'll work out to relatively nice integers, like positive or negative 1, 2, or 3, or 0, somewhere <laughs> around there. Yeah, we'll go for it. 
You shouldn't be like 27 17 or something weird like that. Hopefully. It happens. Anybody completely stuck on partial fractions, a good time to get some help. So I'm subtracting the, I plugged in 1 for A and subtracted it at the same time. So I got 2S squared minus S squared, S squared, no S's, so we got 0S plus 0. <clears throat> I'm going to expand everything on the right side, BS squared plus BS plus CS. Alright, so what is B? 1. 1. So matching coefficients. I could plug in S is negative 1, but I'm just going to go straight matching coefficients. Uh, so B is 1. You just see the S squared coefficient has to match the other S squared coefficient. How do I figure out C? Plug in the 1 for B. 
So I could put well into what into where though. So I'm. So we got B plus C S or B S plus C S, and that should be zero S. So I'm matching the zero coefficient of S to the B plus C coefficient of the other S. So zero is B plus C. We just figured out B was one, so then C S be negative one. All right, so we got A, B, and C. Any questions or discrepancies? All right, so we're gonna just put all those values in right now. So A is one, so we got one over S plus one over S plus one minus one over S plus one squared. So that's L of Y. And the very last thing we have to do is get rid of L. So we're going to take L inverse on both sides. So we're going to invert the L operator. So Y is L inverse 1 over S plus 1 over S plus 1 minus 1 over S plus 1 squared. Why am I allowed to distribute L inverse to all three terms? What property of L am I using here? Distributive. Well, if I was multiplying, it would be the distributive property. Remember, L is a function, not a uh, multiplication. So what do we call this property? So this is a linear property, it's a linear operator. So it splits over addition and subtraction and lets me pull a scalar multiple like negative one through. So L and L inverse are both linear operators. So I can bring constants through and I, it works over addition or subtraction. So you can split it up. All right, you should see in the table all three of these. So look at your table, you're looking in the S column figure out what functions of x these are going to turn into. We already know 1 over s is, oh, is that 1? I think that's 1. Can you check in the, it's 1? All right, so figure out what the other two are. You can share your neighbor's book. All right. Move one seat closer so you can share in a reasonable way. <laughs> so I'll give you a minute to make your decision. You need to pick two. It's not really a choice. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, well. oh, yeah, this is a thing. Oh, 
and maybe half or two of those, but that's I think that's the one you need to use. Can I use your book for a minute so I can copy directly out of there without alt tabbing without a keyboard? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to write down the relevant lines here. So I'll try to mimic the way the table's written. We got F on the left and L of F on the right. Uh, the first one was we already knew, but K turns into K over S when our K was equal to 1. So that was the easy one I already did. And then we have 1 over S minus A turns into e to the ax. I think this is the one we used yesterday as well. Uh, what is a for us? Negative one. So it's a little tricky. Our a, so on the first one our k was one. This one, the a, is negative one. So we're going to get e to the negative x. So any questions on that second one there? And last up is probably the trickiest. That's the 27.83. None of the other ones will work because I think all the other ones that have s plus a to a power, s minus a to a power, have other, there's like plus a b squared outside or, yeah, there's something else messed up about it. So the only one that we can possibly use, unfortunately, has a factorial in it. So we'll have to deal with that. that turns into x and e to the ax. All right, so again, our a is negative 1. What is n for us? One. n is 1. It almost looks like it should be 2, but n's really 1 here. Because it's n plus 1, which will give us a square power when n is 1. All right, so... I'm writing the left term up here with the a negative 1 and n is 1. There's still that minus sign that was already there. So it's x to the first, e to the negative x. OK, so any questions on using that table right there? So we're going to do one more problem. I think we got enough time to do one more problem here. So this should be y. Now that result you could have found way easier using y equals e to the mx taking some derivatives. So you could have found this a lot easier. There would be a repeated uh, solution. That's why you get the extra x outside. So the it looks like the oh, negative sorry. one solution would be repeated twice. Negative B plus square root, what is that called? Quadratic, we will get a so negative one for the answer, which will add uh, an extra x because it will be the same. Because it's you get a you get a, a repeated so you get us m value of zero. So you get m equals zero, m equals negative one, m equals negative one. So you see it show up twice, basically. And the rule was every, every additional time it shows up, you multiply by a higher power of x. And then you would have constants in front of these, and so then you would figure them out with the initial conditions. So much easier. It's just different. So our constant c1 and c2 would just be 1 and negative 1? Oh, this would be the... What we didn't write down is a homogeneous solution. This is not the homogeneous solution. Because that would have two constant coefficients. This is a particular solution. All right, last problem. So it's yp. Yes, this would be yp. So you'd still have to do the y to the mx? Yeah. Find the general? Yes. But 
there's probably an assumption we made I made somewhere up in these notes or in the previous page. I bet it was in the previous section. Here's the linear operator, operator property that we used at the bottom of the screen right here. That we, well, after we did partial fractions, we can distribute it. Although it's technically the linear operator property. I'm not sure where the assumption was made. And we'll write, yeah, okay, here it is. So we're basically ignoring the YC is what we're doing. So we're just looking at the, y, the particular right now. When when we're in 25 through 27, yes, we're just n ignoring YC, basically. But if we wanted to find YC, would we follow section 21, non-homogeneous linear means with linear coefficients, case two, or one or more well, terms in two of x are linearly dependent terms in YC. So, well, we also got two initial conditions, so there will be no, the general solution will have its constants filled in if you use the particular, the initial conditions. So because we have the initial conditions, there won't be any extra uh, constants that left over at the end. Um, anyways, let's not worry about this right now. We'll just get back to solve one more problem. All right, procedure is exactly the same that we just did. <coughs> so we got y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals 12e to the 2x. And we have y of 0 is 1, and y prime of 0 is negative 1. So I'm going to give you 10 minute, oh, 10 minutes. I'll give you 6 minutes. And then I'll try to fit solve it in 4 at the very end. <laughs> so do what you can in 6 minutes. I'll walk around and answer any questions I can. can't really fit everything on the board, so just use your notes. What you're going to need is the exact same uh, degree 2 version of 27.41. So what I put on the board is what you're going to need, this guy right here. Do you want this on the screen or do you want the problem on the screen? You already have the problem down. Anybody need to copy the problem down again? All right, so I'm going to leave this up because I think it's more useful for you. And I got some instructions on the right side, but I don't want you to. Are we giving initial conditions for the problem? Yes. Y is 0 equals 1, and Y prime is 0 equals 2. Yeah. So, yeah. 1 and negative 1. So a2, a1, a0 should be very easy to see. Your f function is 12e to the 2x right there.
I'm only, I wouldn't normally write that, but this follows the pattern of that chart. Yeah. So that's why I wrote it up there. And if you ever see a negative up here, you went too far up that chart. Okay. So you should have a zero derivative and possibly higher derivatives, but you but should not have a negative one derivative. Because that would be You went too possible. far. You can have an antiderivative, but that you went too far. can copy down what I'm writing though. I'm writing the same formula. It should be in your notes in, in a box. Yeah, I just realized that I, for some reason, I put the second to last line without that formula. It also should be on your cheat sheet.
Oh no. I don't know how I got it to. L e to the 2x is at 1 over s minus 2. All right. Excellent. So you're going to notice a very similar thing happen. I don't want to have fractions of fractions, so I'm going to use common denominator on the right side so I can add all those into a single fraction. <coughs> so we're going to have s times s minus 2 plus 2s minus 2 plus 12 over s minus 2 s squared minus 2s plus 2s minus 4 plus 12 so we got no s's and plus 8 partition my partial fractions. Any questions on the algebra getting up to here? So I think we got to stop because it's time to go. But we just do partial fractions and then L inverse both sides and it's just the sum of these three terms basically.